Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. Puerto Rico has avoided default, for now at least. The Caribbean U.S. territory still has more than $70 billion in outstanding debt to go. Governor Alejandro Garcia Padilla has said that the country won't be able to pay that all back. In an interview with The New York Times, the Puerto Rico governor said, quote, the debt is not payable. There is no other option. I would love to have an easier option. This is not politics. This is math. Now joining us to help us break down the numbers and the history behind Puerto Rico's debt is our guest, James Henry. James is a leading economist, attorney, and investigative journalist who writes extensively about global issues. Thanks for joining us, James. You're very welcome. So, James, there's really a lot at stake here. I mean, Puerto Rico's unemployment is more than twice the U.S. national rate. The poverty level is nearly double that of the poorest U.S. state. Like I said, a lot at stake. So let's have our viewers understand, how did Puerto Rico even get here, and who does it actually owe money to? Well, Puerto Rico has been borrowing to pay its bills. Uh, its tax base has uh, lingered. There's a lot of tax evasion going on, especially of sales tax maybe $800 million a year, but they've accumulated not only a $72, $73 billion uh, debt, but they also have about $50 billion of uh, uh, semi-funded pension liabilities, and that's consuming 40% of their government uh, uh, budget. So they've come to a uh, situation where they can no longer afford uh, to pay this, uh, these huge obligations. Uh, and. Uh, you know, raising taxes might have been an option a while ago, but they've really suffered, I think, uh, the, from the combination of being uh, far too reliant on, uh, on debt uh, at a time when growth has slowed and there was a big recession. The population on the island is uh, being shrinking about 1% a year. It's about 3.6 million. So they've ended up with a per capita debt burden here. Uh, you know, just slightly less than Greece. In fact, if you add in the pension debt, it's greater than Greece, about uh, $40,000 per capita. What, um, what about municipal bonds? Um, what role does that play? Yeah, the difference with Greece is that, you know, in this case, uh, uh, Puerto Rico was funding its uh, uh, borrowing uh, by issuing uh, uh, municipal bonds that were basically, or bond, Puerto Rican Commonwealth bonds that are have been granted uh, triple tax-free status. They don't pay, if you, if you receive interest on these relatively high-yield bonds, you don't pay uh, federal, state, or local taxes. Uh, and so that was a very attractive, especially to the Wall Streeters who were able to talk Puerto Rico into issuing more and more of these things. Uh, and uh, if you look at who owns these bonds, uh, you know, more than $11 billion of them are owned by U.S. bond funds. Big names like Franklin Templeton and Oppenheimer have gone uh, deeply into Puerto Rican bonds. And also a lot of individual investors have been buying up these bonds. So, uh, you know, collectively, this is a big deal for the sake of those who've been investing in Puerto Rican muni bonds. You so unlike the Greek situation where there's almost no U.S. exposure, uh, in this case, we have a substantial amount of... Uh, of, uh, of exposure, and it all adds up to a bankruptcy potentially on about four times the size of Detroit, which was the largest uh, U.S. municipality. But right now, Puerto Rico isn't eligible to claim bankruptcy. Is that right, James? That's right. It's a commonwealth and not a municipality or, you know, so it, it's not allowed uh, to uh, go into Chapter 9, which is uh, what uh, Detroit was able to uh, get a federal judge to allow it to do. That means that um, if there's no bankruptcy here, then Puerto Rico is really in the kind of Greek situation where the creditors are not going to have to share the losses and there's going to be a big uh, uh, burden placed on Puerto Rico if it wants to borrow any more. Uh, it's running about a 5% uh, GDP deficit every year, so it needs uh, that borrowing. Uh, it's going to have to, uh, you know, uh, cut spending, it's going to be very painful, uh, or try to find uh, new sources of tax revenue, like a new form of sales tax. Mm. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, bankruptcy would be uh, the preferred option. Uh, but as we've seen in the case of Greece and many other uh, 
sovereign entities, and Puerto Rico is still in that category. Uh, unlike uh, private companies or individuals, there is no orderly procedure for a lot of these sovereign entities. And, uh, you know, Puerto Rico is now going to Congress and asking for permission to be uh, allowed to uh, file bankruptcy. As people are following this story, do you anticipate certain developments? For example, you mentioned Detroit being similar um, to Puerto Rico. Should we be looking out for a privatization of some of these public assets in Puerto Rico? Well, I mean, Puerto Rico is going to have to scamper to find ways of paying off its creditors. Uh, one of the options here, in addition to raising taxes from uh, or improving tax enforcement, would be uh, to you know, sell off uh, private assets, privatize uh, government assets. Um, and that's one of the first things that a bankruptcy court would look at. It would you know, try to uh, have an adjustment plan prepared by Puerto Rico, but also uh, have the creditors share part of the burden. Uh, you know, and that's what the Congress is going to have to decide here, whether it really wants to help Puerto Rico uh, out of this situation, allow it to enter a, a bankruptcy court and have this uh, orderly procedure. Uh, right now, the Congress is spending about $22 billion a year uh, in aid and federal aid uh, in Puerto Rico. And so it's a big factor in the Puerto Rican economy. Uh, it's about 20 to 25 percent of GDP. There's also a lot of remittances that are being sent to Puerto Rico by folks working here. So. You know, there's a lot of connectivity between the U.S. economy and Puerto Rico that uh, doesn't allow us to just turn our backs. All right, James Henry joining us from New York. Thank you so much for being with us. You're quite welcome. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.